Welcome to Y-Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, where one of our members loves the laser cutter so much he hugs it and calls it my precious, my precious. This is lesson 19 of our Canadian Amateur Radio training class. This is on interference and troubleshooting. It's a relatively easy section. Go for 90% on the quiz. So we're going to have two types of interference. The first one is local proximity. The second one will be distance. So local proximity interference is things that usually happen when you're close to something else or things you're affecting nearby or things nearby that are affecting you. The first one is receiver overload. And this tends to affect all frequencies, not just one frequency. So it's usually from a nearby transmitter. So the characteristics of receiver overload, again, it affects all frequencies, not just one. It can affect TVs and other equipment. And again, no matter what frequency or channel you're watching. It's also known as front end overload because for a receiver, the front end is where the signal comes in. So how do we fix this? Think about it. Your ham radio is operating on HF, on higher frequencies. The TV is on VHF, very high frequency, and UHF, ultra high frequency. So we want to let the higher frequencies through and kill the lower frequency stuff that's coming out of our transmitter. So we use a high pass filter at the TV. High pass meaning it will pass the high frequencies and drop the lower ones. The next one, receiver desensitization. This one tends to affect a specific frequency. So someone is transmitting close by. Usually it's an issue with AM and single sideband transmission. So it's particularly affected by somebody transmitting on CW Morse nearby that's affecting your SSB reception. So two transceivers close to each other communicating through the same re repeater can be affected by this. So get off the repeater and talk to each other on simplex. Intermodulation. You're hearing multiple signals. So you're turned to a signal. You can hear another signal at the same time in the background. So remember, even though you can still hear your primary signal, it's still a form of interference that it's coming in on top of your signal. Now, audio frequency interference. You know, a lot of this stuff we're talking about radio, RF affecting things. Can we have interference at the audio level? And why would that happen if we're transmitting in the RF range? Well, Amplifiers and other components, if they're not to spec, there's a problem with them, they can emit all kinds of weird signals. Uh, long speaker wires on your stereo make great antenna to pick up those signals. Uh, you can put a ferrite core on the speaker wire. That's like a little metal donut, and you loop the wire through it on the way through. If your cables are too long, if there's a lot of excess lying around, shorten them up. That's another way to take care of this. Now, what about if this is affecting your telephone? You can't go and rip the wires out of the wall. Uh, you can get RFI filters that plug into the phone jack and then your phone plugs in. Uh, very similar to what's being used when you have a DSL line to stop the DSL hiss signals from coming through on your phone conversations. Audio rectification. This is poor or defective components picking up signals and turning them into audio. So an example is a PA system in a, in a building, uh, and uh, it'll be picking up signals that are being transmitted by uh, an amateur radio operator. Now, if that, uh, if that interference is coming from an SSB, a single sideband signal, uh, what you'll hear on the PA is distorted audio, distorted speech. If it's coming from a Morse signal, what you'll hear is clicks humming on and off. Uh, here's an example. If it's hitting AM radio, your signal will be heard on all frequencies 
because it's being picked up by some component like the amp. So when it's audio rectification, it's usually not coming in uh, as a radio signal. It's coming in as something else, and your amplifier is picking it up. Because the amp is picking it up, it'll be everywhere, no matter what station you tune to. Uh, the best first solution for audio rectification is to make sure that everything's well grounded. Now, difference between overload and rectification. On overload, you're blowing away the signal on all frequencies. Rectification, you're picking up a signal on the frequencies, and some component that should not be is tuning in and passing it through no matter what signal you're tuned to. So it can even be independent of the volume selling, uh, the volume setting. So again, that can be happening at the amp or somewhere else as opposed to coming in from the antenna. Spurious emissions. So you're supposed to be transmitting on a given frequency, but you're coming up on a different frequency on another radio. So that can be caused by poor grounding or operating without your transmitter's cover. Because inside your transmitter, there's a lot of oscillators and other thingies that generate the signal. And that's why your radio generally has a metal cover, not plastic. Uh, even if it looks plastic, it's usually plastic over metal to stop those signals from getting out. And manufacturers only test with the cover on. If you're running stuff with the cover off, uh, on top of a risk of a shock, as we uh, dealt with in the safety section, uh, you're running the risk of generating a lot of interference because of those signals that wouldn't be getting out if you had the metal cover on your radio. Anytime the interference is key clicks, it's usually Morse, or CW, uh, because when you're clicking the key, uh, you're making and breaking a circuit. And think of that like the noise sometimes when you play with the wall switch uh, for the lights and you hear that little sparking noise. So it's a too sharp a rise or a fall. And uh, if you were to look at it on a scope, the waveform's a mess. Uh, so you can use a key click filter to smooth that out. Now, the other type of interference, distance interference. So things that affect your signal or that your signal is affecting that's a long way out. Usually it's harmonic and parasitic oscillations. So we know that uh, transmitting at one frequency with more power or different antenna, you can get uh, an effect of harmonic to get another frequency. So a harmonic of uh, 20 megahertz would be 40 megahertz or 80 megahertz. Now, you can have that deliberate. You can also have it unintended and happening inside one of your transmitter components. Uh, Multi-band antennas are often part of the problem. So unlike other interference, it's not a proximity thing. It's not something that's happening to things co close by. Uh, so you can be generating harmonics at a lower or a higher frequency. And they're usually multiples of a base frequency. And so they'll be interesting because they'll generate interference on some TV stations, but not all of them. It's the TV stations that are on those harmonic frequencies. Now, where it's really a problem is those harmonics can end up at frequencies that are out of band. And not just out of band, outside of the allowed amateur radio bands. So that's a bad thing. And uh, you're not allowed to transmit on those frequencies. You might be interfering with other critical things, other critical communications on their received frequencies. And you need to get that cleaned up. Then there's splatter. Splatter is overmodulation. So modulation is when we generate the RF signal from our audio. And uh, we're generating within the bandwidth we're allowed. With splatter, we're overdoing it. We're overmodulating, so we're taking up way more than of the bandwidth than we're allowed to or supposed to take. Then there's overdriving, which tends to generate harmonics. So if you've got too much power going into your amp, then your amp flat tops. It can't generate, it can't amplify the signal anymore. So this can generate harmonics. 
How do we fix that? Well, have less power going into your amp. Reduce your microphone gain if your, amp, if your uh, transmitter has a control for that. Just stop screaming. Speak quieter. Move the mic away from your face. And uh, a low-pass filter will cut out those higher harmonics for you. So we've mentioned low-pass and high-pass filters. A high-pass filter passes the high frequencies, so it blocks out the lower frequencies. A band-pass filter allows just one band of frequencies through. It blocks everything that's lower and everything that's higher. So from there, it's pretty obvious a band reject frequency will block a certain band and then allow lower and higher through. A low pass blocks out the higher frequencies. So in particular, those awful harmonics you might have been generating. And the notch filter is a band reject, but it rejects a very, very narrow band. So if you do put a filter on your line, so for instance, you've got your transmitter or your transceiver, it's going to a cable uh, that's going to your antenna. Uh, remember that our impedance has to match to get effective transmission, to get all the power through. So you have to check on your filter, does its impeder match, does its impedance match everything in the chain? Now go for quiz 19. The links are in the comments section below. Uh, while this section seemed to have a bit of difficulty, if you go through the questions, you find uh, the material is pretty logical. And uh, after three passes, you should be easily going for 90% on this section. So good luck with the quiz. And we're YLab at https colon slash slash ylab.ca. Uh, and if you want, leave a comment on uh, below. The links are all there, and uh, maybe we'll get around to reviewing and posting those comments.